All right, everyone. I am at airport, and this is uh, actually India's one of the best. Not one of the best. Actually, the best airport. Guess which airport it can be. Till the time, I'll start the quiz. Neurothal and Squint. So just give me a minute. I will just check that uh, if I am able to see or not. Otherwise, I'll keep on speaking. And if it's not being recorded, then that's a trouble. So let me just check for a while. Or if someone can test it. Okay. Yeah. Should be okay. So I am ready to give this Neurothal and Squint test. Let us see one by one, three to one, like in the manner in which I will give the test. Which is the antagonist muscle of the elevation action of SR? So antagonist is given by Sherrington law. So SR is causing elevation. So elevation antagonist should be depressors, and depressors are inferior rectus, but that is not in the option. And one more depressor is there. Superior oblique is a depressor. If you know the cross from the class, SR is an elevator and IR and SO both are depressors. So both are antagonists for elevation action of SR. So here the answer is superior oblique answer. Which law? Sherrington law of reciprocal inhibition that works in one eye at a time. That is telling about the antagonism concept. So the answer of this question is superior oblique. Hi, Shravan. Which is a synergistic now? Now synergistic means those muscles in one eye, in one eye, which causes the same action. So these are theoretical questions like adduction action of SR. What are the three actions of SR? You pull the SR. It causes elevation as a primary action. It causes intorsion and adduction. So adduction action is by one more muscle. Actually, two more muscles. Medial rectus cause adduction. That is the answer over here. And even inferior rectus causes adduction. That is not in the option. That is why the answer over here is medial rectus. So synergistic is only in one eye. Okay. So adduction action of SR synergist are MR and IR. If I ask which is a uh, antagonist uh, action or uh, which was there antagonist of elevation action of uh, sr that was ir and so but which is a antagonist action of uh, adduction action of sr that will be of course all the abductors like lr is a abductor uh, obliques io and so are abductors so that uh, synergies means which are causing the same action theoretically in one eye. So adduction, it, it is for particular action. So adduction is by MR and recti. Uh, MR and recti muscle. That is inferior rectus and superior rectus. So here the answer is of course medial rectus. Now which? Now which? It is which? Which extraocular muscle does not originate from the apex of the orbit? I hope you know the apex of the orbit is the posterior part of the orbit. The anterior is which you see in my eye. This is the base. Apex is behind. Only one, all the muscles are originating from the annulus of Zin actually. All the recti are originating from annulus of Zin in the apex. SO is above the annulus of Zin from the apex, from the body of sphenoid. But IU, IU, IU muscle is from the floor of the orbit, base of the orbit, and it goes posterior. That's why if you pull it, it causes extortion, elevation, and abduction theoretically. IU is the answer of this. Yeah. Now, patient was examined in the squint clinic, and the notes mentioned that secondary action is more than primary, secondary deviation is more than primary. So, one the definition you should know primary deviation means when one normal eye looking straight and you measure the deviation in the other eye and when the squinting eye looks straight you measure the deviation that is known as secondary deviation now primary is equal to secondary in committent squint because there is no limitation of eye movements in committent squint in committent squint either paralytic or restrictive have secondary more than primary not because of Sherrington law because of Herring's law in competent squint, right eye straight, left hand side. If left go, straight, right hand side. Herring's law. Even in paralytic and incompetent squint, 
Herring's law, because of Herring's law, secondary is more than primary. And primary is measured when normal latex is true, and pallid eyes are examples of incompetent. That is also behaving like this. But this is because of Herring's law, not Sherrington law. For example, if there is a right LR palsy, it is right isotropia. Okay. Right now I am measuring which deviation? Left is straight. Left is normal. This is primary deviation. Okay. This is primary deviation may be X degree. Now if you ask the patient to look straight from the squinting eye, it cannot because the right eye is LR is palsy. But if you try to move the right LR, which is the yoke muscle of right LR, yoke, left MR will overwork. So this is secondary deviation which will always be more than primary deviation because of Herring's law. Because as simple you understand, when squinting eye is looking straight, the normal will move more. It will move more means secondary is always greater than primary in incompetent squint, particularly paralytic squint because of Herring's law, not Sherrington law. Now, whenever a visual field is given to you, you have to consider you are the patient. If you are the patient, this is visual field of you, right visual field, left visual field. So, this is both sides, means this is left homonymous hemianopia. Right optic tract vision has this, where you have a vernicase hemianopic pupil also. Now, see, English, right visual field has, yeah, fine. Right visual field has nasal defects this is temporal of the right visual field this is nasal so right visual field has temporal is wrong right visual field has nasal defects left visual field has temporal defects and this can be seen in homonymous yes it is congruous also congruous means symmetrical 50 percent here 50 percent here and homonymous means on the same side so this is left homonymous hemianopia congruous which can be seen in right optic tract in optic tract they can be incongruous as well depending on the size of the lesion. So, incongruous asymmetrical can be seen in optic chiasma and optic tract at your level. As we go towards the occipital cortex, the fibers become very conjoined that even a small lesion can cause symmetrical. So, as we go towards the visual cortex, they are always congruous. But optic tract, optic chiasma can be incongruous. Who knows what is the answer of optic chiasma incongruous defect? Right? Anterior chiasma syndrome. So, which is not a grade of binocular vision. There are three grades of binocular vision. Fixation is a uniocular phenomenon. Simultaneous fixation is a binocular. That is the first grade. Fusion is the second grade. And stereopsis and depth perception are same thing. That is the highest grade of stereopsis. But here the answer is fixation because simultaneous fixation is the first grade. Not only fixation. Fixation means I am looking at a object from one eye. That is not a binocular vision. Now, in the Maddox rod, Right eye, it is given that right eye is having Maddox rod with axis horizontal and left eye is open and you are throwing a torch light. Whenever you check the central retina, it is a macular function test. Whenever you see from the center, Snellens chart, color vision, uh, this contrast sense, brightness, everything comes from the center. This also requires a vision. So, this is also a macular function test, subjective test. It's a test of binocularity because both eyes are, have to function. Right eye will see a vertical line because rods are cylinders. Left eye will see a torch light. If the torch light is in the center, patient is normal. If the right eye will see the vertical line, yes, in normal. Left eye will not see anything, no. Left eye will see a torch light. That is the answer, that is false. And I hope the interpretation. If always the interpretation has to be taken as patient's view. For example, the Maddox rod, just now someone asked me, in Maddox rod, if axis is horizontal, he will see vertical from right and if he says that I am seeing a line and the dot over here, like I am the patient for example, I am seeing this is line and here is a dot. Right eye is having Maddox rod and line is on the right side. This is uncrossed diplopia that is seen in ESO squints. Now this is true. For interpretation, this is his chart. Interpretation uh, for identification. Ad interpretation is not asked. This is his chart, least chart. What you should know, it is for incompetent squint because it tells about the limitation of eye movements. True. It is a subjective test. True because patient has to do something. It is not useful. Is com incompetent because competent there is no limitation of eye movements. And yes, it is a name. It is his chart. Interpretation is not asked, but identification can be asked. It is useful in incompetent squints. Now, what is the difference of 
incompetent from competent which does not favor incompetent incompetent has binocular diplopia true for compassion there is a abnormal head posture true there is a limitation of eye movements too if there is a left ir palsy patient cannot do depression if the left ir is restricted patient cannot do elevation so in paralytic and restrictive if there is a limitation of eye movements in competent there is no limitation of eye movements usually there is no diplopia in competent so no head postures and same deviation in all cases is a feature of competent squint there is different deviation in different cases in incompetent squint not the, not selection please sometimes i mean direction i mean this is sorry uh, spelling error human being direction of deviation of eyes in parallel squint is governed by what many people have answered herring's law no the chopsky test is not the answer that tells about the head tilt in parallel squint and purkinia effect is something else okay answer is sherrington law why for example if the patient is right lr palsy which muscle will work more right mr that's why the right eye will go inside because of over action of right mr that is determining the direction of squint means direction is inside that is eso so in parallel squint the direction of deviation of eyes in parallel squint is governed by sherrington law because that tells about the antagonist muscles that is the 10 questions of your neurophthal and squint i will again give a question a question more on neurophthal as well i hope uh, your yeah, background knows i can't do anything because it's a airport which airport is this the beautiful airport best airport of uh, india you can answer if you want okay i'll answer in the youtube all right that that's all for uh, that is for all for today thank you very much i would like to catch bye bye